do you want to start investing in real estate, but you're really daunted at the task of where all this money comes from? You know, where are all these investors seemingly getting endless money to continue to buy properties, rent them out, cash flow them, and yet buy another one? I'm going to walk you through in this video on actually a very, very easy investment strategy that you can employ. And this is a follow-up video to the last video I just did teaching you guys how to utilize the equity in your home that you have as your primary home now or in a 401k or an IRA to pull funds out and deploy that capital to buy some rental properties. Because remember, in your primary home, you can go ahead and pull out up to 80% of the value of your property in a single mortgage, pay off that other mortgage and take that cash out and start having it make you some passive income to create some generational wealth. Now, let's get back to the strategy. Now this strategy is not a new one, but it was actually brilliantly coined by the Big Pockets podcaster, David Green as BRRRR. And what does BRRRR simply stand for? BRRRR stands for the acronym of Buy, Rehab, Rent It, Refinance It, Repeat It. And what the goal of this strategy is, is to use the minimum to get into that property as a down payment, which typically on investment property on a conventional loan is either 15 or 20% down. Then rehab those costs. Once you rehab it, you've added value to the property. Go ahead, put a renter in the property to more than cover what that mortgage payment will be. Refinance the property by using the additional equity in the home that you've added by doing a big rehab get the majority, if not all, of the cash you put down back out of the property to then go ahead, refinance it to a fixed 30-year fixed term with a mortgage payment that's much lower than the rent, get that capital you've received back, and now you're ready to buy the next property. Now, the biggest regret I ever made in all the years that I've been in real estate is the simple fact of all the flips that I should have kept as rentals. I simply didn't do it because truthfully I was too lazy. I own a mortgage company, I get pulled in a million different directions, and it was just a lot of times easier for me. I would buy properties, sight unseen, get them rehabbed, immediately get them listed, sell it, make a quick 50 to 100 grand and move on to the next one. And I wasn't doing this as my full-time job, obviously. It was like job number four on my list, truthfully. And if I looked at it, if I had kept all of the properties that I flipped, and use this strategy, which I easily could have done. I mean, shoot, I own a mortgage company for Pete's sakes, can obviously do the mortgages on them. I would have added approximately about an additional $2 million to my net income alone, if not more. And I was just being conservative because I didn't want to give myself a heart attack. Now, I want to walk you through a property I originally bought thinking I was going to flip it, but I penciled out the numbers and I promised myself I would be no more flipping property. I'd be buying and holding everything. I was shocked at what I found out. Now this property is a property I just picked up for $385,000, a three bedroom, two bath in Riverside County, California. I bought it directly from the owner who just needed to get out from the property because they were moving out of the area and they wanted a quick cash sale. I picked up the property and it was probably worth at market value about $450,000. But the people, they were a little bit of hoarders, the property wasn't in good shape, they would have needed to put a good amount of money into the property just to resell it. So they were happy taking it because they themselves had only paid about $150,000 for the property about 18 years ago. So I did a quick close, cash at three eighty-five, dollars but I could have very easily done a loan amount because the property was in a condition to easily go ahead and finance it. As long as there isn't major significant issues, meaning broken windows everywhere, middle of a remodel, you can get conventional financing. And even if the property isn't in the best of conditions, you can get private money financing here at Modern Lending We Offer that you can buy these investment properties and put just 20% down and get like a private money loan to actually help you employ this strategy. And if you have more questions about either how you can get investment property financing either for properties you can get the normal conventional loans because they're in a decent condition or for those that you can't, just drop me a comment below or drop me a DM and I'll make sure to get back to you. Now back to the video. Say I was gonna go ahead and put 20% down. Basically, go ahead, put $77,000 down as my down payment, get a loan on a conventional loan for $308,000 and close that loan. Now, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, I have two examples I can look for, right? I went ahead and completely looked at the property and to get this property completely dialed into where I wanted to get it, it was a $75,000 rehab cost. That includes any holding costs, insurance, remodel costs, all of those items. 
That means I am all in as a project cost $460,000. Now, at the completion, which I just completed the property this week, it is easily worth $570,000. I added about $110,000 of value to the property by blowing out the walls, redoing everything, and making it look like a model home inside. I fully believe that no matter if you rent that home or flip that home, there is a very, very formula you want to follow using neutral colors, everything being bright and airy, making everything with decent quality. Do not put crappy quality in your properties, whether that's a flip or not. You can get great deals on using everything, even from Alibaba, great contracting sources, all of those things. So all in, I was $460,000. The house is worth five seventy. dollars I have the option now to sell that property and make an $82,000 profit. Why? Because I have expelling expense. I got to pay real estate agents, title, escrow. So at the end of the day, I can make a quick $82,000 profit and call it a day and go ahead and move on to the next property. And all this in call it about 65 days from buying the property to going ahead and closing escrow. So not a bad deal for two months and I've been to the property one time. But I remembered, I know rental rates are continuing to go up another 10% approximately Riverside County alone this year. Home appreciation is going to go up another probably 6 to 8% and then another at least 5% in my personal opinion over the next four or five years. So rather than taking the immediate cash now, I wanted to look at what it would look like if I employed the BRRRR strategy. So what did I do? I figured out what the market rent is and the market rent is easily $3,000 a month. Why? I can command top end market because the house is new, clean, nice, and a great school district. Probably going to get closer to $3,300 a month for the amount of tenants are coming to come in. But $3,000 a month is a very safe, easy. And where did I get this number? I simply reached out to my real estate agent to have some pull some rental comps. They show me some closed rental comps that are in the area. Now, I can go ahead and do a cash out refinance up to 75% of the value of the property. Now, some you can go up to 80%. I don't like to rip all my equity out of a property. I always like to leave at least a 25% equity cushion. So I did a 75% loan to value based on a 570 appraised value. That gives me a loan amount of $428,000. Now mind you, that payment at that $428,000 30-year fixed conventional loan with a rate in the low 3% on an investment property is going to give me an all-in payment with taxes, insurance, whole shebang for $2,400 a month. Now, $3,000 a month minus $2,400 a month gives me a $600 a month cash flow. Now, realistically, I'm going to manage the property myself. I like to always give myself about roughly about a 5 to 7% variance for expenses based on that monthly amount. So I always like to figure about 5 to 7% of whatever the rental amount is per month to set aside for repairs, maintenance, and other allowances. So even though I'm going to be making about $600 a month, figure about $200 of that. So I'll really net pocket about $400. Now, mind you, I was really conservative with this number. So truthfully speaking, I really think my net cash flow will probably be about $600 a month. Now, that $428,000 loan, what did it go ahead and do? Is it went and paid off the $308,000 loan I originally got with 20% down. Well, 308 minus 428 gives me what? $120,000 of cash back to myself after that mortgage is paid off. Now, I in this case came out of my rehab costs of $75,000 plus $77,000 down. So I was $75,000 out of pocket for rehab, $77,000 out of pocket for that down payment. Now, a lot of contractors, if you work with them consistently and you actually build that relationship, a lot of them will allow you to put this lien on the property and then you can pay off that lien with your cash out refinance. So don't worry if you don't have a massive cash out budget for that rehab and you work with a contractor a lot, they'll allow you to put that in and pay that through the cash out refinance once you build that rapport. Now mind you, I got $120,000 cash back on the table and I've only went ahead and put out roughly about $150,000 total out. So at the end of the day, my total out of pocket for having kept a $570,000 house that'll cash flow me $600 a month is $32,000, right? $32,000. Think about what that cash on cash return is. That means I'm getting myself roughly about $7,000 a month in cash flow, okay? Excuse me, $7,000 a year in cash flow on a $32,000 investment. What if I told you, hey, give me $32,000 and I'll give you $600 a month for the rest of the time? You would be take that investment in a heartbeat, right? Now at the time, guess what? My renter is paying off the house. So let's do some very, very simple math right now. Now one, my rent, I'm gonna go ahead and be able to increase that year after year. 
So using simple math numbers, in five years, that rent is going to be near $4,000 a month. Guess what? My mortgage payment isn't going to change. So now, in five or six years, instead of just netting $600 a month, I'm going to be netting somewhere in the neighborhood range of about $1,500 a month in cash flow. Right? Now I'm getting $1,500 a month in cash flow. The value of my property, that's $570 now, easing, evenly using a 5% appreciation over the next five years alone, I'm looking at a house that is worth over $700,000. So, should I have taken my $82,000 quick profit? Or should I have a delayed gratification knowing very well in five years from now, I'll be receiving $1,500 a month approximately in passive income. I will also have an asset that is worth $700,000. And because he'll be paying on my mortgage, my mortgage will be paid down to approximately $400,000. So we'll have approximately $300,000 in equity into a home, plus an asset that's cash flowing about $1,400 to $1,500 a month, five years down the line. And I don't know about you, but $300,000 added to my net worth plus positive cash flow of $1,400 a month sounds a lot better than a quick $82,000 pop, right? And that right there is the definition of how the burst strategy is used. And as you can see, I don't need, if I want to buy another house, I don't need to have to find a whole new set of $120,000 to $140,000 to work with. So as I just started out with that $77,000 down payment, and $75,000 for my rehab costs. So that $150,000 in my bank account was replenished because I was able to get that cash out refinance. So now I still in that bank account have roughly about $120,000 that I can redeploy, buy another property. This time maybe it won't need quite as big of a rehab budget. Go ahead, deploy it, do the same thing and go from there. And then as that goes down the line, then I can always look back in time in three, four, or five years from now, guess what? When this house is worth 700,000, I want some additional cash to deploy. I can do a cash out refinance, pay off the mortgage balance, and get myself a little bit of extra money. Always while maintaining a good equity cushion of at least 25%. So right there is how real estate investors, very simply put, can use the burst strategy and go ahead and make sure to not only recapitalize a good portion of the money they outlaid, but also generate a really good passive income investment for their future and their kids' future.